I could probably do this at a better time of the day when the sun is not right in my eyes, but I haven't gotten a video up in a week or so, and I wanted to do that. Uh, this is a Rubbermaid 100-gallon livestock watering trough, and I've been wanting to do some tubbing for a long time. I'm not sure where I first saw it. Maybe Adrian's Fish Room might have been uh, one of the inspirations for me because he's got all kinds of tubs outside. And then I saw Patty's Fisherman. and he was using one of these, and I thought, this would be cool. It's uh, a 100-gallon Rubbermaid, 378 liters. I got it at Tractor Supply. Oh, and there goes my kitty cat. And my intention was to create another source of guppy grass because I, a lot of you know that I sell the hell out of it on, on eBay. And I've got it in, I don't know, let's see, three, four, I think five tanks in, in the garage. And I can run out really quick. So I'm hoping with this, I'll be able to keep up with it. It's kind of a quality problem. And I've got some other plants floating in it and other plants planted in it right now. And you'll, you'll see that in the whole video. Then I thought, well, you know, now I've got this tub out here. I should put some fish in it because, right? I mean, that's what we do. More water, more fish. Uh, last year, I had a bucket out here on the back patio where I was trying to make green water. And all I made was mosquitoes. And this year, I tried that again out front with another bucket. And I got green water, no mosquitoes. So I thought mosquitoes are going to show up in here. And if they do, I need fish to control that. I was going back and forth between where they the White Mountain minnows and madaka rice fish and somebody chimed in on another one of my videos and said that the madaka rice fish are really intended to be viewed from the top down because of the nature of this tub there's no way to see in the sides really uh it's top down so i thought okay madaka rice fish so i ended up ordering some madaka rice fish today they are called pearl galaxy madaka rice rice fish from aquahuna they should be here the middle of next week this is saturday the 9th of november 2024 so we should have them sometime sometime the middle of this coming week so anyway the rest of this video is how i set this thing up how i put the overflow drain in uh what i've got going on inside there and so come on let's go take a look all right you can tell i'm backlit right now um, 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 um. New project. So I've been wanting to do something like this. I got this. It's a hundred gallon tub. It says so right there. Right. Right. Zoom, 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 zoom. It's easier just to walk in. hundred gallon tub, 370, what, eight liters. One of those Rubbermaid. They're called, what do they call them? Industrial foam. Uh, it's kind of a plastic. So for a new project, I bought a bulkhead. It's a three quarter inch outlet that's going to go, I don't know, around here somewhere. I got to find a good spot to put it for an overflow and, and it's under this structure here. So I'm not worried about it overflowing from rain. Plus we're in the desert. We don't get that much of this stuff, but mostly uh, I can drop a hose in it and let it run and do water changes that way. Just let it come up and overflow out. Um, and I'll show you the, the parts I got for that. So I got to drill that, figure out where. It'll probably be somewhere in this region here. I don't know. I'd like to get it fairly close to full. Got to find a decent flat surface for it to uh, to anchor so it seals. What I want to put in here, I'd like to get some rice fish. And I was just uh, messengering back and forth with, with a friend and he just got new platies. And I'm thinking, I'd seen some really cool different platies on uh, eBay, but that's a possibility. But I think I'm going to go with the rice fish. I've got these plastic tubs, storage, little storage bins that I'm going to fill with potting soil, covered with sand, kind of the, you know, the dirted, tank thing only i'm not going to dirt the whole thing just these tubs and stick a bunch of jungle valis in one and some amazon swords in the other and just set those on the bottom here and then put guppy grass in here that was the plan originally was to put guppy grass in this thing because i run out too quickly it's been a bread and butter for me on ebay so i thought well if i can get guppy grass going in here also then i can have more of a continual supply because all of a sudden, I'll get cleaned out, and I'll have to pull it and wait for the tanks to refill. So hopefully, that'll work for this. So anyway, the next step will be to figure out where I'm going to drill the hole and drill the hole and put the bulkhead in. Take two. Okay, this is a bulkhead. All right. And it's got dirt all over it because there's dirt all over the table because my wife was repotting African violet. And I probably should have hosed the whole thing off first, but what are you going to do? So anyway, it's essentially three pieces. And it's also... Uh, a left-hand thread. So to loosen this, I have to turn this to the right. Okay. So there's an inside and an outside. And 
I think I will probably put this side to the inside, this flat side, and this will be the outside. And we'll turn this out. So I said there's two pieces. Uh, I'm sorry, I said there's three pieces. Here's two. Here's the third, a thick rubber washer, okay? And that'll seat up against the inside of the tub. All right, so that's part of it. So let's turn this the wrong way to tighten it back up. And then I've got this. And this is a, a, a female hose adapter. So it's male pipe threads. They're three quarter inch male pipe threads by garden hose threads, okay? And the reason I, I got garden hose threads is because this is gonna go into this. Garden hose threads are coarser than pipe threads, all right? Now, I don't really need to, but I put Teflon tape around this end just because. More than anything, it acts as a lubricant. Yeah, it's supposed to help seal, but it acts as a lubricant. It makes it easier to put two pieces of plastic pipe together and then take them apart later. And so this will thread into this, like so, all right? And this will all be on the inside of the tank from my fingers forward here. And, and that way, uh, overflow will go through this. This will keep any small fish or maybe even shrimp uh, in the tank uh, from getting washed out. And, you know, I showed you already that there's a roof overhead, so I'm not too worried about overflow from rain, but from the garden hose. I'll stick the garden hose in there and let it run and do water changes that way, let it overflow. And at some point, I will probably put a fitting here with an elbow. And instead of this just flushing out, I'll drain it down the side of the tub and off to the edge of the patio, which kind of makes more sense. So then what else do I need? I've got this drill motor. And this is this drill bit here is really for, uh, you know, like deck screws. Uh, it's got a countersink right here. But I just want this is sharp. So I'm going to use that just to start a little pilot hole to make make it a little easier around so that this part doesn't kind of walk around before it actually finds a hole. Now this is a uh, inch and three quarter hole saw. Okay. And I need that. Let me take this back apart. That's going to drill the hole into the side of the tub and this fits inside it. So it'll be a snug fit and that's okay. And this will wobble around a little bit. So this should slide right into the, into the tub then it'll tighten, tighten around it. And then eventually I will build that, you know, drain to run it out. So let's get started. Now, as you can see, there's also a drain cap on the bottom here. That's one way to completely drain out the whole entire tub. And I think maybe what would be nice there would be some sort of control. So that would be a matter of putting a ball valve so I'd have to come out with uh, a threaded fitting and probably a right angle and a ball valve to allow it to drain out that way. And that would be for a complete drain and, and not really, and ideally everything would be out of the tub by then. Now this cap also has a washer inside that's gonna help it seal. That's where, where the bulkhead will be situated. There's enough room for it here. And I'm just going to push and I just drilled a nice clean little hole right there. That was in the center, you know, the approximate center of that part of the bulkhead. Now this should just drop right in there without wobbling around too much. And there we are, a nice clean hole. Now I just got to clean up all the mess. All right, so I used my wife's dust buster from the kitchen to uh, clean up all the debris from the drilling. Now I need the other end. So ideally this should come through just like that. And again, tightens the other direction. It's just not intuitive. And I will get a pair of chan or a couple pair of channel locks to tighten this down a little bit. And that's it on the outside. And let me flip the tub up and I will show you on the inside. There's the outside. And what I'll do is put a threaded elbow in there, drop it straight to the ground, and then run it off to this uh, gravel area on the side. And then here it is on the inside. All right, so that'll give me a, a water line, maybe four inches or so below, uh, below the top. 
And, and I think that's pretty good. So I'll snug that up and I guess I could probably rinse this out. It's gonna, it's really a dusty environment here. There's some dust that's blown in and more dust will blow in. So I don't know if I'm gonna worry about that too much. I should probably just hose it out anyway from if there's any manufacturer's refuse here. So I will do that. I also want to put a little, I don't know, like a little fountain pump, you know, a little uh, submersible pump down inside here maybe uh, to keep the water moving a little bit. I may do that. I may, uh, you know, put an air pump out here, drop an air stone in. I don't know. There's a, uh, I got a plug up here to this bug zapper so I can just run an extension down off of it, down under the, the back door here. And uh, if I run a submersible pump, then I don't have to worry about bringing a, a air pump out here. Which it's almost full, it's filling quickly. But I want to get it coming all the way out and up and over so I can see the uh, the bulkhead uh, overflow work. And here we are, we're coming up on the overflow. This will be how I can do water change. I set the hose in, throttle it so that water comes out the overflow. But there it is, success. But not so much so, you know, not such a great flow coming out of the hose that it uh, overflows the tub. So you just have to hit that happy medium. And right now it's still climbing. So obviously if I was doing a water change right now, I would have to turn the flow of the hose down to roughly match the outflow of the overflow here. But we're done. So we can just let that uh, we can just let that drain itself out. Success. All right. The first thing I use the API tap water conditioner, and it's going to be 50 mils for 100 gallons. Uh, these are 10 mils, so five of those for the full cap. Don't forget the shake. And since I'm going to put plants in it. I'm going to add some CO2 boost, um, five mils for 50 gallons, so 10 mils of this. And then API quick start, it's going to be, it says 10 mils for 10 gallons, so my arithmetic's right, that's 100 mils for 100 gallons, so 10 capfuls. So the floor's potassium, one capful for every three gallons, so that's uh, three capfuls. And so what I'm going to do is pour this in a bigger cup because, and I rinse that cup out in one of the tanks, because uh, it won't hurt anything is uh, Select Aquatics uh, Rapid Growth Fertilizer, and it's uh, one turkey baster per 30 gallons. Three, and I'll rinse that in the tank too. All right, so that takes care of everything that's gonna go in that tub, except for plants. All right, for now what I got is some guppy grass I took out of uh, the orange sunkiss shrimp tank. Also three of these big dwarf water lettuce. And that'll that'll start. And then I'm still going to put those tubs of Jungle Valcinaria and Amazon Sword in the bottom. And these will be those tubs. There's a label on one somewhere. They are uh, about 14 inches long on the inside, probably about seven inches wide and four inches high, which is good. And then I will fill them probably about half full with Miracle Grow potting soil, and the rest of the way with uh, pool sand. And then I will plant directly into that and we will see how that works. And I'll use one of these for uh, the Jungle Valcinaria and I will use the other one for the uh, uh, for the Amazon Swords. There's a Jungle Valcinaria floating here. There's another one down here. They're spreading, so I'm gonna thin this crop out. And then the Amazon Swords are in these pots down here. So I'll take a bunch of those. Well, I just dropped one of those dwarf water lettuce in the pond and look what's scattered duckweed. So I've got my little shrimp net here. I'm going to try and catch it all. There's also something else in there. It's called Rickia water spangles. That I can live with. And the duckweed, not so much. So I just netted it. Those, that bigger piece, those two bigger pieces are the Rickia water spangles. But I think I got it all. God, I hope so. I did not want to get duckweed in this. I just dropped a duckweed in, pick it up, drop it in a couple times, see if there's any... Uh, I said duckweed again, oh, dwarf water lettuce. This is the one I think had the duckweed trapped under it. This one's got a couple little little off, offshoots going. That looks all right for now. And maybe this is the one. Yeah, there's some duckweed. Um, there it is on the roots. I'm trying to fish that off by hand. Got it. These came out of my 40 breeder. There's another piece. Uh, there's still a couple other small pieces that came up and broke off. 
Hopefully there's no duckweed on those. And I sell all these plants on my eBay store, and that's why they're here. And they'll also help uh, filter the water. And the nice thing is, if I got too many, well, I can just turn them into compost. Remember, never, ever, ever put these in a local waterway. Just throw them under plants in the garden. And if you don't have a garden, give them to somebody else. Here's the guppy grass, big old handful. That's the start of that. Hopefully that'll go pretty quickly. And there's a bunch of little pieces in there. The easiest thing's probably just to wash it out. Big as life, there it is, clean bucket. And then, all the chemicals. So there we are, got the first plants in. I just sifted out a bunch of, sifted, pulled out a bunch of jungle balsamaria. Let me show you what I got. So you can see how this grows too. It grows along these runners. So there's one, two, three, four, five on that runner. And this is where it broke off. So I'm gonna separate all these. They're breaking off anyway. I'm gonna separate them all. But check out how long the leaves are too. They're easily three, maybe four feet. I don't know if you can, let's try that again. Here's the roots. So here we're going. That's about one foot, about two feet, three feet, every bit of four foot, maybe pushing five feet on this one leaf. It's amazing stuff. And I'll, I'll probably prune them back a little bit. So I'm gonna separate them all. I think that'll be easier. And you can see this one here, this little one. See the new little, uh, new little runner. It's only got three leaves on it. There's one inside there, two, three, and uh, it's already got a new little shoot. All right, well, first off, I collected 10 uh, of the jungle val plants, and then I filled this tray about half full of miracle Grow uh, moisture control potting, so or potting mix. And then I uh, added water and I stirred it all up and I missed a couple spots and I will go back to get those so none of it floats up. Don't want that happening. So I'll just go back and make sure that, uh, so it's saturated. The idea was just to thoroughly saturate this. Now I'm not going to invoke uh, the, you know, the father fish name here because I seriously doubt this is how he'd do it. I've seen some of his stuff and he's got a, quite a process. I was watching a couple other friends and this is how they did dirt of tanks with this potting soil capped it with sand and that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got that potting so it's thoroughly wetted so it doesn't float up after I try and submerge it. Then I'm gonna cap it with uh, cap with pool sand. All right, so I fill this with the pool sand. Uh, and I also realized that if and when I start pulling uh, the jungle valve out of the pool sand after it's rooted down into the potting soil, it's gonna disrupt the whole thing. So the whole thing's gonna have to come up out of the water and uh, probably have to redo it each time I do that. But the idea from, I, didn't, I couldn't tell you where I got it, I wish I could, that uh, somebody was planting in, a t in pots like this and then the runners that hang out are the ones they're harvesting. Because there will be runners that will just take off across the, you know, across the, the tub. So we'll see. So anyway, what I'm gonna do, actually there's 11, I found an 11th one, there were two stuck together. Uh, I'm gonna just bust the, these leaves off probably about Oh, I don't know, what are we talking about here? Maybe eight, you can't see it because there's not enough room. About 18 inches long. And I'm just bunching them up like this together and uh, giving them a clean tear. And I think what I will do is two rows of five, long root on this here too. You can see how the main body of roots is there and then there's these. So I'll, I'll do a little root pruning too, just the same way. And I'll pull a little of the sand aside, pull a little bit of the sand aside, and just work the roots down into it. And that should be good to go, just like that. Okay, and we'll just do that all the way through. Once again, cut the, pinch, pinch the leaves, give them a tear, about 18 inches long. Um, I'm gonna do one at the other end here. This is one way to set and center things, especially with odd numbers, it makes it kind of easy. And this is another way to go about it. Just hold the roots like this and just sort of push them in with your fingers and uh, there you go.
Oh, look what I found. 12. And we'll stick that one at this end. So we got an even dozen in there. That's great. And then what I'm going to do is pour some water in here just to saturate the sand and ideally work out any air bubbles because the air bubbles would dislodge the plants as the pot gets submerged. We don't want that. Now this is going to be the fun part. I have to walk this through the house so I probably will take it around the back gate and meet you all back there. All right we're back and I dropped a half cinder block down in there on the concrete fence blocks and I dropped it in on side so the hole goes through so it's kind of a tunnel for I don't know whoever lives in here and here we are so let's uh, drop it in and see how it goes so this is thoroughly saturated there's water floating around so hopefully nothing will bubble out and we'll just drop it in and set it on the center block that's the plan water rushed in a little bit moved the sand just a little bit but all in all it's good. Right now it's easy to see because it's brand new and the water is just uh, all set up. I need to put some wildlife in here and I don't want to just dump shrimp in here yet. I'd like it to season a little first. I could just throw some guppies in here and they will be in with uh, the rice fish if I can find some. I found some at a place called Aquahuna online so I might order uh, a couple uh, orders from them. They come in, come in groups of six so that'll be 12. Drop a couple sponge mops, in, or sponge mops, a couple, uh, yeah, I guess sponge, sponge mops. That's um, what they are, the little scrubby mops, or the spawning mops. And then hopefully they will do their thing and make little rice fish. And the guppies will certainly do their thing and make guppies. I just don't know if that's what I want to do. I, I've got enough guppies and I'd like to thin them out and get rid of some of those. We'll see how that goes. So we'll think it through. It'd be hard to chase fish down in this thing. Especially, you know, short of draining it. I don't want to do that. I just filled it. Ah. So the next step is going to be build the, the next tub like this with uh, the Amazon sword. And I'll probably put maybe a dozen or so Amazon swords in the pot too. I've got, I've got that many. I'd like to keep a couple, probably a couple of the bigger ones for the aquarium that they're in right now. I'm going to redo that one. And this will give me a good excuse once I get all those swords out of there because they're all in those little terracotta pot. I mean, I could theoretically just drop all those little terracotta pots in here, but I think I'd rather put them in one of these plastic trays. But you know what? Now that I say it, I'm going to have to think about that. And you know what? I'm going to sleep on it and see what happens. All right, the same setup. <clears throat> about an inch potting soil, maybe two inches of sand. And I'm going to put eight Amazon swords in there. Here they are in pots. And they came out of this tank. There's still uh, six left in there, and they're the bigger ones, and I want to use those for planting in this tank when I get around to doing that. So in the meantime, I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, I'm going to slide these out of the pots, remove the potting soil, which is just um, used uh, substrate, a little bit of fluval aqua, whatever it's called, fluval stratum, uh, sand, some gravel, uh, all that's coming out and I'll just plant them just like I did with the uh, jungle bell. And same as the, with the jungle bell, I filled this with water now, so that way when I submerge the pot into the tub, it doesn't float out, nothing will float out. No bubbles, no big bubbles will come out and dislodge any of the plants. So that's a good idea. And also, uh, I went through these as best I could. I, I found a couple of ram's horn snails, and if I can keep them out of there, out of that tub, so much the better. We shall see. I, you know, never know how, how that's going to go. There could be eggs that I missed. I found some really small ones, so hopefully I got them all. So now the next thing is to submerge this. There we are. Submerged at this end. I ended up taking that concrete block out from under the jungle bell. I thought it was just too high up. Give it some more room to, to grow out. And I dropped three spawning mops in here, along with the dwarf water lettuce, the guppy grass. And I put that little uh, submersible pump in there so that way it can just at least move the water a little bit it's not breaking the surface at all i need to do something about that so we'll come up with something so as always thanks for looking